Hi, Luminaires. <laughs> I can never figure out if it says we're on. We're on. Hi. How is everybody on YouTube? I hope you're doing well. It's Friday. Yay. Here comes the weekend. My name is Jamie Butler. If you're new to the channel, I am a medium. I've been doing this work globally for over 30 years, and it's my passion, a deep passion, to just gently wake you up maybe to some new thoughts and to help normalize the whole woo-woo because it's not woo-woo, it's true-true. Hi, <laughs> happy Friday day. I posed the question earlier, because we're gonna talk today about the difference between personality and essence. What is your definition of personality? I actually have somebody here today. Maybe I could put her on the spot. Her name is Genevieve Dealey. She's actually a Reiki master and offers Reiki sessions and does sound healing up in New Jersey. If you're in the Northeast, you might want to look her up. How do they look you up? Um, you can go to my site. It's channelofyourpeace.com. Channelofyourpeace.com. We will write that down. Gee, says Regina. Everybody saying hi. Hi. Hi, Jay. Hi, Shelly. So, Genevieve, what is your definition of personality? Oh, uh, yeah, not great at being put on the spot, but I um, think about it too. <laughs> I would say it's the way that you naturally express um, your likes, dislikes, not necessarily just your preferences, but it goes a bit deeper than that. Like um, your flavor. Your flavor. flavor. It's your flavor <laughs> of life. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I appreciate that. It's the way you express your likes, your dislikes. Shelly Ham says, I think personality is the energy you put out into the world. Very similar. Mm -hmm. And the compassion, laughter, good or bad, it's how you choose to share yourself with the world around you. Um, Lori Wombeck says, one thought I have on this is a reaction to positive attention you receive after moments in time. Just an observation I have about myself and my personality has changed. Observation is the key that unlocks so much. Mm -hmm. It is such a big tool in developing your spiritual awareness, your, your enlightenment movement, all of it. <laughs> Ariel just says, I can't wait to get everyone's perspective on this. <laughs> okay, well, let's dive into it. Everybody who wants to be here is going to be here. <laughs> Regina, I don't know. I don't have a personality. <laughs> such a oh, lie. I don't know about that. Regina. That's such a lie. <laughs> it is. It's kind of how our personality is, how we define ourselves. It is our likes and our dislikes. It is our fear, our, our emotions. It's how we choose to react in certain circumstances and situations. And our personality is built upon our childhood um, strategy skills, really, that we build. So when we're born into the world, and it's awesome, we come in with this, I'm alive, and I need somebody to take care of me. I need somebody to give me what I'm asking for. And you have one voice, that's your cry, your scream, your tribal voice. We can go back to that too. <laughs> and um, in that, you know, you're asking for the attention, the help, the care, the food, the shelter, the warmth, the whatever it is. And to no fault of your parents or caregivers, as everybody is doing their best at any given moment, you know, maybe they don't understand that one cry means warmth and they try to feed you. Maybe they don't understand that um, you were hungry and you didn't need to, you know, be taken out of the crib, but whatever it is, like the misunderstandings and communication. And then in a very innocent way, as parents do, they begin to educate you on the rules of life or what they feel is best in life to keep you safe. You know, the parent's number one job is to keep the baby alive and keep the baby safe. 
And so what they'll do is teach that child what they learned about what kept them safe. So I think in every generation, we get better and better if the parent is aware enough. But at the same time, what's good for one person might not be for the next. And we're moving through, your parent is moving through their personality, their likes and their dislikes and how they show up in the world, their triggered responses and their childhood strategy that they learned. And they are now using that to give to the child. And so we have a cycle that happens. It's all very normal. And you guys, I'm not a psychologist. So please, when you're listening to my words, just listen to my words as straight up human being, just figuring it out herself. Like this is casual talk between you and me. (laughs) This is not like I have all the answers and I'm about to tell you. No, this is never how I'll roll with you. I don't have the answers. I only have my answers. Might not be your answers. So um, (laughs) Vlad is saying, please smash that like button. (laughs) Yes, I am not very good in advocating for myself here, Um, which actually goes back to a childhood trauma of mine and a strategy. Um, So I could get into that or I could go back to the personality. I'm going to go back to the personality part. (laughs) And um, talk about when the parents are teaching from their personality into the child, then they're inadvertently and innocently teaching skills, we'll call them skills or routines or habits that work for them. And then there's this really wild thing that gets under my skin and I am still wrestling with it, I'll admit. It is the whole um, be good movement (laughs) that was pushed upon, like, don't talk, you know, be good, be kind, be polite, but it was used as a tool. It wasn't genuine, you know, so as a kid, you know, it was mostly yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Level of respect was drilled in. We had certain polite, you know, mannerisms that were expected of us. And if we weren't doing them, then we were seen as just terrible, rude, awful. And please apologize for what you just did, which maybe it was not saying thank you. Um, It was, you know, I'm just sweeping in general. Um, We grew up in Central Florida. but we still had that kind of Southern flair that my mom grew up with, which was just, you know, and my grandparents were all from Georgia as well. So we had this kind of Southern polite mannered and it, it didn't really allow a person to be exactly themselves. And so you were being trained for certain reactions which then you put into your personality so that you could then move through life with ease. If I hit those marks that other people approve of and agree of, then I'll be, it'll be easier for me to navigate the situation rather than being myself. So the sacrifice begins and you start surrendering yourself. The part that gets under my skin is that whole good versus bad. Like if you don't hit these behaviors, then you're not seen as a kind person, you know, if you don't do these specific things. And I'm really hoping, and I think I will live to see the day where anybody, no matter how they react, and I know that's a very big statement, and I know that you could come at me with some really, what you would call horrible actions, that they would be seen as reacting from their true self. Um, even though it might not be the case. I see the tornado I'm stepping into here, people. Um, But would be addressed as this is something that's coming from them. Anyways, leaving room for people to be themselves is where I'm going. Eric says, I'm such a Pisces, very quiet, very sensitive and empathic. I love that you relate it to your sign. Um, Sabrina, says, why is it when we're around different people, our personalities are different? Um, My little chameleon, it's actually not always a chameleon thing. 
So some people are so empathic that the way they move through life with ease is to mimic or mirror somebody else because like attracts like, and that moves with ease. So it could be an empathic strategy and skill or um, why you are acting different around or personalities are different is could, could be you feel more comfortable with them and you can actually be yourself. So, I mean, there's other ways or reasons why personalities shift. It could be that you're not stable in your own and you're trying to figure out who you are. And so in your search, which is what puberty is, and it's so awesome to watch if you have children, they'll get a friend and all of a sudden the friends are exactly alike. <laughs> and then they'll get a new friend and all of a sudden the child is different, but that friend is just like the other, like they're exactly alike. They're searching, like just going through shoeboxes of personalities and seeing what it is. So empathic, comfortable around the person, or simply you don't know who you are and you're trying to find it yourself. There's others as well. But I think it's nice that you're noticing if it happens to you, or you notice that it's happening to somebody else. And maybe this is a great moment where you can say, I noticed. You know what I've noticed is that it's this way with this person and it's that way with this person. I wonder why there's difference and it can open up for a great conversation. I can hear most people going, there's no way in hell I would have that conversation with somebody. I'm not putting my foot in that, but I'm hoping you would put your foot in that. It's nice to provide that space to get down and into it with observation only. I'm not talking about intense emotional situations here. Jasmine says, personality is how we learn how to deal with people without losing who we are in the exchange. Well, that's interesting. How we learn to deal with people without losing who we are. That's personality. Because uh, I feel like personality is almost the, the megaphone or the expressor for who we truly are. Like personality itself is an instrument, is a tool that we go to and we rely on to express who we are. So that's interesting that you're saying from your viewpoint, it's how we learn to deal with people without losing who we are. So you're kind of saying the same thing. It's a tool without losing this essence inside our authenticity, our truth. But then it's almost a, a buffer to deal with people. That's exhausting when I read that sentence. I'm hoping not every person is something you have to deal with. I know you're just making a one line sentence. Kiara says, I know my personality and how it adapts to the world around me and to the situation I'm in. I have more trouble to get to my essence. I think I'm starting to discover it only now. Okay, what is our essence? Put your fingers to the keyboard. I'm gonna read a few more of personality stuff, but I want to hear now, what is your essence? Amora says, speaking of personality, have you been watching any of the Johnny Depp Amber, <laughs> her child? I have very strong feelings about it, but curious if you have any intuitive insights. That's a rabbit hole I'm not willing to go down, and I actually haven't watched them, so I can't really go down it, I guess. Oh my God, Regina, you're killing me. What? You don't have the answers? You're supposed to know everything. Katie P says, maybe your essence is what remains if the personality is taken away. Ding, ding, ding. So your personality is the way that you express the trap strategies that you learned as a kid. Like for example, I'll take myself because that's the only thing I can do. And I'm gonna use a system called the Enneagram. And Enneagram is a personality typing system that has nine types. And this is the book that I like to read from. The Wisdom of the Enneagram by Don Richard Rizzo and Russ Hudson. And I test often as a number two for the majority of my life. And recently I've tested it as number seven. So number two is a helper. Number seven is the enthusiast. Is that really me? I don't know. I don't know, guys. I think the darn book nailed it. It's actually, it frightens me when I read it. 
because it's the first system I found because astrology doesn't really do it for me as an Aquarius. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I like this, but it's not really me. And then you start talking about the Enneagram and it scares the crap out of me. I'm like, did someone interview me and write this about my life? I don't get it. So this, the childhood message as a number two, as a helper, that um, was lost is you are wanted. And so in the act of not hearing that I am wanted, then I develop strategies. I create a basic fear. And the fear for me would be fear of being unworthy of being loved. So then I develop these desires. And if I can fulfill these desires, it's like I'm feeding my ego those parts that weren't getting fed from my care provider community. So if I can do it, then I'm going to be okay. And I'm not going to have the fear of not being worthy of being loved. And I am wanted. So my desire is the desire to be loved. And if I can't meet that for myself, and often kids can't meet their own desires and react because they don't have the skills or the knowledge, then they'll deteriorate. And so my deterioration part is the need to be needed. So if you need me, then I'm going to change that into being loved. And therefore I'm getting my desire met. Now I'm not so afraid anymore. And so my strategy is the need to be needed. And boy, I have to tell you luminaires, I've built a lot on the need to be needed, honestly. And it rattles me to the core when somebody would challenge my work. Not so much anymore, not in the last like, 10 years or so, but before, if somebody challenged me and said, oh, what you're doing is, is crazy, you're a cult, you're this, it's not true, you can't prove it, it would hurt me to no end. And I couldn't understand why. I used to tell people, because I'm tired of being challenged, and I am, and I was. Um, but why was I reacting being tired? Why couldn't I accept that this was just what this person was going through? Because it was not, they didn't need me clearly through their disapproval of me they didn't need me and then that just roped in my whole childhood wound of not being wanted i didn't i didn't i wasn't needed and so it was really hard as an entrepreneur to build in this field based on helping people which fulfilled you know my need to be needed and then having people say we don't need you anymore it was devastating so how I started to unravel that was to let go of the personality because those were the expressions of the personality to a, a core um, need, I guess we could put it into a need uh, to be loved. And I started to observe everything. Observation is pretty darn wild. It is a chance for you to look at something without judgment, without saying it's good or bad without having an emotional reaction to it, like, oh, I can't believe this is like drawn into it from every core aspect. It's a way for you to take two steps back. I like to call it the healthy arm's length, arm's length away. I'm looking at it. And then if I tell myself, because I'm an emotional person, so empathics, maybe this resonates with you, but I'll simply say, I have to pretend like this is a business deal and I've got to look at this, like there can be no insertion of emotion, like I'm in a camera and I can only repeat the facts that are happening through the camera lens. And then I got to look at it that way. And that helped me identify that I, in my personality, don't need you and don't need your attention. I need myself. So I started to flip the lens instead of looking otherly to fulfill my needs and to play out my personality and my strategy to be fulfilled that way, I started doing it for myself, showing up for myself, saying, you've always liked doing Kundalini. Why don't you follow through with that? So I did. I took a class. I got certified in yoga. Oh, you've always liked eating a certain way. Why don't you just do that? Why are you just agreeing because we're going to a restaurant? And they don't have your food. You just eat it anyways. You go home with a bellyache. 
you know, because my need to be loved. So I don't want to create any chaos, guys. I'm going to use the strategies of being polite and well-mannered to make it easy so that you guys smile and that you like me. Mm. So then I started changing that as well. And when we're saying 10 years, guys, that's not long ago. <laughs> not for my age. Oh, Diane is jumping in. Diane, this is great. My favorite book is The Way of Integrity, and it's all about uncovering our true self and expressing it in one degree turns. One degree bites. I am so supportive of it. You can do one degree. That's exactly how my observation began. I took one thing at a time, and when I was comfortable with it, I took the next 1% and went for it. And then just kept continuing and continuing and continuing. And again, I still fall back a little bit. But now when I choose to speak up or react, I really want to know why am I speaking? Like, why am I here? Why am I doing this online right now? It's no longer because I need your attention. It's no longer because I want to fulfill my schedule and my routine because I've said, I'm going to go live every week. I think I've already been live this week. So <laughs> I've already done it once. Um, but it's to be here because I want to share what I have found. And it's now my hope that if somebody else is listening and it hits them in that way, that it helps them too. But it's not because I need to do it for my career or I need to do it because I need to be seen or I need to do it because I want your attention because it heals me in some way. I can now live independently of those things. It's coming from me. KDP says, I feel like personality can change drastically and consciously, whereas essence is more of a stable underlining energy, like our core being. It is. So imagine slowing down and making choices from who you really are, rather than triggered choices, emotionally triggered, or rather than, do you really want me to say this? Or that would be really helpful to them, but not so helpful to me if it just really came from you. And when you start to look at yourself that way, these childhood strategies, the example I gave with myself is um, to be wanted. It's no longer there. It's interesting. And through, if you ever look at the Enneagram, through the studies of it, um, if you get into this type of looking at your personality and your essence, personalities can fall apart. They can tear, they can shift, they can change essence remains absolutely the same even if you've been through horrific experiences in your childhood even if there was i don't even name i don't even need to name the horrific stuff i'm sure you can do that by yourself <laughs> think of it the gamut of it it does not bruise damage tarnish tear or even touch your true essence but it will eat a personality alive and so when you see people with really tight personalities um, they're not as flexible or forgiving. They're just wound up and it's got to be this way. And if it can't be that way, they just want to bite you. Like, ah, sit down and they blow up and they're rarely reactive. You know, they are trying so hard to use their strategies to stay in place. Kindness is like an amazing thing at that moment. Compassion is an amazing thing at that moment. When you see yourself rising up that way, kindness and compassion. It's almost like, okay, it's you know, kindness and compassion always. But it gets to a place where you can then see the essence behind the personality and maybe get straight to the core of things, do some healing with it rather than dancing, <laughs> dancing with it. Diane says, noticing our thoughts and reactions with curiosity rather than judgment is a way that she rolls. Diane Hillary, actually, Diane, do you mind posting up your contact information here? Diane Hillary does amazing compassionate work here in the South, but she also does work online globally. So if you're looking for a therapist, a one on one, I believe, Diane, you also have groups. I do not get paid for this. This is a true endorsement of somebody that I really believe in. And I like the way that she handles herself and manages her work, like she's truly an example to what this kind of shift away from personality and getting into essence is. Um, so if you want to continue that, you can find her at 
Atlanta self-compassion. She'll post a few more, I hope. I know you have classes too. Yeah, Jasmine McNeil says, I call that arm's length away. I call it bird's eye view when I do that. It is a third person perspective. I remember when I, um, I still do readings, but I remember a long time ago doing readings and a spirit came in and said, that person has a really good third person perspective. I was like, what does that mean? Because I, I, it was a compliment, I knew, but I, I didn't really understand why or what. And they said, well, they have the ability to look through their own eyes, really clear. Not through their personality, but just from who they are. And they have a really talented ability to look through the other person's eyes, the empathic skills, and feel, see, and acknowledge them. But what's more importantly, they can rise above it and they can observe. Like you were saying, Jasmine, with your third eye, your bird, bird's eye view, that third perspective where they can then see from an outside situation what's truly going on and then how they could add um, to that situation or navigate it. Shelly Ham, thank you so much for the financial energy. I enjoy our live chats so much. You always present something to say or something that really makes me think and pushes me out of my comfort zone. Go, Shelly, go, I'm pushing you. <laughs> Keep going. I like comfort, especially when I'm sleeping. But as we are growing, if we're avoiding the uncomfortable spots, you're avoiding these great leaps that you're going to take in your spiritual evolution. So I do encourage you just to lean into the discomfort just a little bit. Stay a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. See what unfolds. Ah, oh, Diane, you're so welcome. I'm, I'm happy that you're here and that we're able to talk about your good work. Vlad, <laughs> see, are you trying to feed my strategies? Vlad says, you're always needed, Jamie. Your teaching has no boundaries. Well, Vlad, I, I'm happy to say I'm healthy enough that I'm going to show up whether I'm needed or not because it's what I want to be. It, this is where I want to be. Um, Jasmine says, I've been working on my authentic self and working on my throat and sacral chakras. Key elements, isn't it? And then I find when we work on speaking the truth authentically, so not speaking through personality or triggers or reactions, we're speaking from truly the I am spot, the essence, that um, when you get that handled, not handled, but you get alignment with it. Like, you know, this is what you want to do. You don't want to have to train yourself to do it. You're just kind of naturally doing it. It feels like everything else just kind of falls into place. And then beyond the sacral, Jasmine, I'm curious if you're finding yourself kind of rising up a little bit into the higher consciousness chakra, the one that's about two feet above your head, and hanging there, because that's that bird's eye view that Jasmine was talking about. Like, when we get there, it's being in the center spoke of all the incarnations and being able to see out into other lives with different strategies and different childhood basic fears and desires, you know, that are trying to play out because it's there too, that not only can you do the work on this incarnation, but you can spread it out and do the work on other incarnations as well. You're like, maybe that was a little too much, but I went there. <laughs> Angela Larson, it's like you're motivated by purpose and meaning ah, to expanding the growth for all. Thank you. Yes, I would like a t-shirt made of that. Thank you. I'm motivated by the purpose and meaning to expanding growth for all. It is. I just want to like wake everybody up. You've been sleepwalking. You've been sleepwalking by staying within your personality. You've been sleepwalking by believing what everybody else has taught you rather than believing in yourself. You've been sleepwalking by playing in the confinements of our structure and our culture rather than being curious and going, why? Why is it done that way? Why is it run that way? Why can't we do something different? Oh my God, then we just start popping up all over the place, being ourselves. Regina Townsend. 
Thank you. That was very kind of you. Thanks for the financial love. I love you too, deeply. Thank you. <laughs> Diane says we have an eight week class on mindful self-compassion and a shorter one and affordable online course launching the summer called Discovering the Basics of Mindful Self-Compassion. Do it. I don't know when the next time I will be popping up my mindful soul which has mindfulness and compassionate communication, but maybe that's coming in the fall. Um, so I'm a big fan of these classes that pop up like this. So if it's something that resonates with you or you're curious, please look out and research a little bit. <laughs> Pure love ascension. I've been watching you and learning from you since channeling Eric, who is now my guide. <laughs> And you play a big role into my awakening. Yay! Thank you. Wakey, wakey. Hi, Carrie Birdsley. Thank you so much for the financial love. I really appreciate that. Thank you. So our essence, the core of who we are, when you're looking at spiritual growth, being yourself, moving through life with ease, without being picked away, pulled away, feeling like you're giving too much, that you're not being seen, that you're not enough. It is being able to slow down, observe your thoughts, observe your reactions, observe, which means you don't need the answers. You don't have to take action or just look at it. Look at it like your camera lens. Start to take note through the act of observation. You will naturally start pulling away from that which no longer serves you and you'll start leaning into that which you want to do. And then here's two sentences on that little tiny bit where you're making changes and the rest of your environment is going, who the hell are you? You are not the same person. This is very uncomfortable. Two sentences on it. When you make changes, educate those around you about the changes that you've made. Share, period. Those were two sentences. You have to start sharing about your aha moments and your shifts and your changes. If you don't, People will have the expectation that your personality is the same and they'll wonder what's wrong with you. If you don't have the strength to share, then maybe you need to look at why are you keeping that person in your life anyways? Mm, yeah, I know. I'm hugging you right now too. <laughs> so there's some work to do. And then in that, you begin to react from you. A life of ease or easier I don't know if we ever get to 100%. I don't think 100% perfection works on an earthly plane. It's kind of like the joke. Like, I want to make heaven on earth. Just go ahead and leave your body then. And that's going to be the easiest route to get there. You're here. There's beauty in this place. Relish in it. Love it. Joy it. Live it. All of that. Julie B says, happy Friday. Wishing everyone happy, healthy, joyful weekend. I agree with you. This is where I'm going to take my deep breath and kind of sign off and hope that this Friday's chit chat between personality and essence, the differences of them, and how to get there through observation. May it rest with you for a little bit. Maybe it spars a conversation with somebody else, or maybe you go out and you buy the wisdom of the Enneagram and get into the Enneagram and take the really cool 144 questions over at the Enneagraminstitute.org and go what in the world and learn a little bit more or reach out to diane hillary there's so many options those are just two okay i love you luminaires at any moment you have a choice please choose the one that creates happiness for you be big be brave be strong be courageous choose the one that brings you happiness happiness isn't always the easy choice guys you have to make a choice to get it so let's start doing it. And remember, this is not woo-woo. It's true, true. Mwah. Love you guys. Bye. And Genevieve says, bye. <laughs> bye, everybody. <laughs>